What's up, everybody? It's Adam Richmond, and you are listening to Three Point Conversion because you clearly have excellent taste. Hey, Mike, uh, for you, I'm just curious what it's like knowing your, you know, your 60 minutes. You obviously got focus on the Packers, but your 60 minutes from a Super Bowl, and then you know, there's this visual reminder right, right over your shoulder that. There's the game. There's the banner and all of that. How unique is that? I can't see the I can't see the visual thing, but uh, I mean it's what we wanted. You know, it's what it's why we we work so hard. Um, you know, we're in position now. We just gotta you know beat a really really good team uh, at home in a, in a cold climate, and um, you know, we just gotta do whatever we can, scratch and claw to get this win uh, to to reach our goal. Let's go over to Greg Allman. Hey, Mike, when you look back on that first Packers game, obviously things went wildly well for you guys. Where do you think this team has improved the most since since week six? Our, us or them? You. Where, where do you think your team is better? Sorry. Uh, I think we're better offensively. I think we're better offensively. Our defense has been, has been really good all year. Um, I just think we're better offensively. You know, we've been getting more time in. That was like our, what, fifth game together, sixth game, with no preseason, no – uh, we have training camp, no OTAs. So we're just getting better and better, you know, each week as the season goes on. So I just feel like we're better offensively. Our defense has been strong all year. We'll go to Scott Reynolds. Mike, in years past uh, with, with another quarterback, you had so many scramble plays where you would make big plays down the field off broken plays. This year, it's just really been from the pocket with Tom. What's it like to not have to – break off your route and, and, and have some of those scramble plays that you've had in the past? Um, yeah, all, all quarterbacks are different. You know, Tom's 43 now, so he's not as mobile as he used to be. Uh, but it, it's fine. You know, that's how it's supposed to be anyway. So, but it doesn't hurt at, um, when, a, when a quarterback scrambles and it's hard to cover a receiver for five seconds, three to five seconds. Uh, but this year's it's normal. We'll go over to General Lane. Hey, Mike, I got to ask you a question. Um, back to what you said to Rick um, about the Super Bowl signage. Do you not see it when you're driving by the stadium or do you just not drive by the stadium or are you just consciously blocking it out because you don't want to think about it? Um, I thought he was saying there was something like over me, over my shoulder. Oh, so was, oh, yeah. Well, you can see it like from the practice field. There's stuff on the – the uh, the stadium now, yeah. I live I live the other way, so I haven't <laughs> been. But I'm on the way on the way home today. I'll check it out. I'll look to the left and see see what it looks like. Gotcha. But are you trying to block all that stuff out though? Because you do have one more game, or I mean, it's in our city. I'm not blocking it out. I'm not blocking it out. I'm gonna look. You know, I'm I'm a fan of the game. I'm gonna look and see. You know, it's in our it's in our city too. So I'm not trying to block it out. It's extra motivation, if anything. We'll go over to Joey Knight. Mike, when Leonard and Rojo are working in tandem like that so effectively, how much does it help you, the receiving core? It helps the whole team. I mean, when they're just running like that, they're, they're two phenomenal backs. Uh, with, they're both really explosive power runners. Um, when, they're, when they're going, we're tough to beat. Uh, and that's been shown all year. When they both have good games, I think we're on the winning end most of the time. So, you know, when, when they when they run the ball well, we win. So it helps all of us. Go to Ben Bowen. Hey, Mike. Um, you know, last year you guys were seven and nine. This year, Tom Brady comes in. Uh, you're eleven and five, and now in the NFC Championship game, where have you seen him make the biggest impact for this team? I mean, he's he's the greatest player to ever play the game. I mean, that's that's how you you add him on any roster. And uh, I'm sure the the outcome would be somewhat like this. Uh, he, he'll always get his teams to the playoffs. Um, he just he's a winner. He's a natural born winner, leader. You know all that. You know he, at at this point in his career, he's just playing chess. And uh, you know we're we're definitely very happy that he's on our side. We'll go over to Sarah Walsh. Hey Mike, can you just sort of 
put into context, um, obviously you've been here for a while and, and to get to this point, what it means to you just to be playing in this game with an opportunity to be playing in the game of all games, um, you know, two weeks from now. It means a lot. I mean, that's what we, that's what we play for. You know, I know we're professionals and we get paid, but the money can only go so far. You can, you can make so much money, but winning and playing like through injuries and just being hurt and having an opportunity to play for uh, a championship, it, it means the world. We'll go over to Sunday and, and get the job done. I can see the thing now, though, Rick. I can see the, <laughs> the thing. We'll go over to Luke Easterling. Mike, along those same lines as, as what Sarah just said, I think we see across all different sports when you have a, a, a star player such as yourself who, who is with one team and, and the playoffs don't happen and championship runs don't happen, you know, at some point in their career, maybe they accomplish that in another place with another team. But how much does it mean to you to be able to do it here with these guys, with so many of the same guys that you've been fighting with since you came to this team? Oh, it's, it's awesome. You know, a lot, a lot of guys have – we've been losing for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, we didn't take the easy road out. Guys didn't demand trades. And I know people's situation are, are, are different. Uh, but, you know, for, for guys like me and Levante and Will Ghost and the Ali Marpet and Donovan Smith and Cam Bray and all the other guys that have been here for over four or five, four or five years, nine years for Levante, I mean, it means a lot. You know, we've been here. We saw some bad days. And we're happy to be in the position we are now. We have time for a few more. We'll go over to John Ledyard. Hey, Mike, you guys were pretty unbelievable in the red zone most of the season. In the last three weeks, it's really kind of gone the other way. Six of 16, I think. Has something changed in that area? Is it just execution? What's really throwing you guys off in the red zone right now? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. Um, I got to see the, the film and, the, and uh, the plays again. I mean, that's a lot of games. Uh, that I go back and watch, but you know, I don't, I don't really know what what teams have been doing. I guess it's execution. We'll go over to Tom Krasnicki. Hi, Mike. Hope you're doing great. You had Marshawn Lattimore last week. This week you get Jair Alexander, who's had a really good year. So tell me what you see when you watch Alexander on tape. A really, really good player. Um, plays extremely hard. Um, has a knack of being around the ball, uh, really quick. And he, he just, the corners that play the hardest, those tend to be the best corners. So uh, it's going to be a tough matchup. Uh, hopefully we get a, a lot of one-on-one -on -one so we can get a fans a show. All right, we'll close out one from Rick Stroud. Mike, I'm growing fond of your uh... – touchdown celebration. I know you're a boxing guy. You watch a lot of fights, uh, different types. Mm -hmm. You train that way. Like, talk, tell me about that because you, you knocked some people out this year in the end zone. <laughs> I, I didn't do it as much this year. Um, even though I scored the most I've ever scored, uh, I don't know why I didn't do it as much, but maybe because the fans. When the fans are there, it's a little easier to, to feel it. Um, but I've, I stole that from, like, D-Wade and LeBron. They did the little boxing celebrations here and there. And, uh, you know, I do boxing workouts. I, I think it's a, an amazing sport, uh, you know, MMA and boxing. I love watching it. Those are some fucking warriors. And uh, that's a, it's a cool celebration just to add in. Easy. 